Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video course where we extend our linear algebra knowledge to general contexts. And indeed, in today's part 33, we will extend the definition of the determinant. This means that we can also define the determinant for some particular abstract linear maps. Now, before we explain this new definition, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. Only because of your support, I am able to create so many videos about mathematics. And as you might already know, as a supporter, you have a lot of benefits, which you can find with the link in the description. Okay, then I would say, let's immediately recall the determinant function as we know it from the linear algebra course. And as you might remember, we introduced it as a volume function. This means, for example, in R3, the determinant is able to calculate the volume of such a parallel e pipette. This means the determinant function as a volume function has to get vectors as an input. Indeed, if we work in Rn, we get n vectors for the input. Hence, the domain of the determinant function is a Cartesian product with n factors. And then the output is just a real number. And now you can check out the linear algebra course again to see that the properties of such a volume function completely determine the calculation formula for the determinant. This means that we can define the determinant for square matrices as well. This is not a big difference as you can see, because we can choose the columns of such a matrix A for the vectors in the input of the volume function. However, since we have this calculation formula, we can also extend the whole function to complex valued matrices. Therefore, in general, the determinant of a matrix is a complex number. Okay, so please don't forget, the determinant can be used for a lot of different things, but the most important part is that it can tell us if a matrix is singular or not. And for example, this fact can be used to calculate eigenvalues of a square matrix. Therefore, it will be really helpful to extend the definition of the determinant to linear maps as well. And in the first step for that, we can just consider a linear map Fa from Cn to Cn. This means it's completely represented by a square matrix A. Therefore, we don't have any problem for the definition of the determinant of this linear map. We just take it to be the determinant of the matrix that represents it. Okay, so this is what we already know from the linear algebra course, but now the natural question is, how can we extend this definition to general linear maps? And there you might already say, also for abstract linear maps, we have matrix representations we can use. And this is exactly what we will do to define the determinant in the abstract case. So the assumptions are that we have an f vector space v and a linear map L from v into itself. And as always, we also assume that we have a finite dimensional vector space where we can choose a basis with n elements. Now this is really important because we want to have a matrix representation of L. And now it's clear that the matrix representation with respect to the basis B is a square matrix. More precisely, it's an n times n matrix with entries in F. And now as before, we can use this matrix to define the determinant of the linear map. This implies that the determinant of L is a real or complex number. So there you see, this is the whole definition for the general determinant of a linear map. However, at the moment, it's not clear that this number here is well defined. Simply because there is a choice that goes into the definition, namely the choice of the given basis. This is different to the linear map from before, because there, fa was clearly defined as the linear map that sends x to ax. Hence, there was no choice for the matrix A, but now we clearly have different matrix representations for the same linear map L. So we have to check what happens to this number when we take a different basis of the vector space V. And maybe, as always, let's call it B tilde. So you might know that this is something we have discussed a lot 
is just a change of basis. Therefore, let's use the picture we have for that that visualizes everything. This is it, and there you see we have two levels. On the upper level, the abstract linear map L, and on the lower level, we have the two matrix representations LBB and LB tilde B tilde. So we already know these matrices could be different, but they are connected by a change of basis matrix. More precisely, we have a composition or a matrix product that satisfies this equation here. And moreover, if we exchange the basis entries here on the right hand side, we get the inverse of this change of basis matrix. Therefore, as we have learned before, this formula tells us that the two matrix representations are similar matrices. And now it's just a very important fact that similar matrices always have the same determinant. Indeed, this just follows from the fact that the determinant is multiplicative. So a product of the form T A T inverse can be split up into three determinants. And the last one for T inverse can also be written as the determinant of T inverse. Therefore, this completely cancels with the determinant of T and only the determinant of A remains. In other words, this formula already tells us that the determinant of our new matrix representation is the same as the determinant of our original matrix representation. So our conclusion is that the determinant of the linear map L is well defined with the definition here. Moreover, this also means that all the properties we have for the determinant of matrices translate to the general determinant now. For example, we also have the multiplicative rule there. However, in the general context, we have a composition of two linear maps L and K. And now we know this determinant of the composition can be written as the product of two determinants. So we simply have determinant of L times determinant of K. But obviously this whole formula only makes sense if L is a linear map from B to V and K as well. And at this point you might think of a very special linear map we can have from B to V Namely, we can choose the identity map. And since this one is always represented by the identity matrix, we get one for the determinant. So this is important to remember, the determinant function, even in this general case, is fixed with that special value. And now by combining this with the formula above, we also get something for invertible maps. Namely, it tells us that we can pull out the inverse as for matrices. Okay, so these are important formulas you can immediately remember. And also, in order to calculate such a determinant, now you know we only need our linear algebra knowledge for matrices. But still, this abstract formulation for the determinant is really helpful, for example, if we want to talk about eigenvalues of a linear map. So you already know how to calculate eigenvalues for a square matrix with the determinant and now we can also translate that to general abstract linear maps. And I would say let's discuss this extension with the next videos. So I really hope I meet you again and have a nice day. Bye bye.